Say if there's only one thing that we could do, that's making our guests comfortable. That's very switch nice. To the other leg, it gets in the way. Yeah, switch. Uh, all right, let me focus you. Oh, it does actually. How do I? Is that good enough? Yeah. Well, you would know if you had the headphones on. <laughs> uh, but we have a fun time here. Uh, theme music. Oh yeah! So some people like to no obligations. Like lay. It, it doesn't have to lay. You could, you could lay. You could be like this. You could be like that. I'm, I'm gonna stay, stay like this for now. Angles a bit awkward. Yeah. Um, but do as you will. I'm gonna stay like this until I feel comfortable enough to open up. To physically open up to you. Understand. Yeah. Yeah, but emotionally you're already very vulnerable. Well, I don't have dignity, so I'll say anything. I don't really care. Uh, so that's always been good for podcasting and radio for me. Is that I'll. Uh, Say whatever. I watched the Harlan Williams episode. Ooh, two point oh or one point oh. I don't know. It's I there. It, there seemed to be a weird tension between the two of you, and I couldn't tell if it was real or if it was like a bit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, then then it must have been two point oh. Um, he no, was no like, we love seemed, each other. Okay, yeah, Very I figured much. like there because you guys are both guys that. There you go. Yeah. You you guys are we taping by the way? Yeah, you guys are both guys that do like it's hard to tell when you're in or out of the bit. Right. So I was like, I bet they're friends and they're just fucking fucking around with each other. But uh, I can uh, confidently say we absolutely love each other. That's good. I um I'm a big fan of uh his. Not you, not as much, but um, no, I'm a big fan of his. <laughs> gotcha. That was very quick. Gotcha. Uh, these, this is good. The insults and comebacks. Yeah. I do that because usually my guests aren't as quick as me. So when I burn them, they could just look through the book. I got gotcha. you. This is half of Andy Kindler's act in this book. I love Andy. I'm, Careful, I'm, man. Andy's my friend. We I'm don't joking. Like to speak, we don't like to insult people that aren't on the show. I'm not insulting. I'm jo I'm laughing because it's Andy's my. Friend. We'll bleep it. We'll bleep um bleep the f word he just said every time he said it. Just say he's my and then. This bleep is that. an Andy Kindler joke right here. They asked you to be on Antiques Roadshow to be appraised. That's an Andy Kindler. That's like not. Well, I'm not saying when he you said say it. appraised. Yeah, absolutely. that's what I'm saying. It's like an Andy Kindler joke. You could, you could, you could, you could do a better job. I'm going to ask you to put the headphones on if you don't do a better job with the microphone. You can't angle it properly. There's no. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Now we got it. This, these are not. Look. By the way, this is my road set. I yeah. take four four suitcases on the road. Look at this. You you, could uh, angle it. you have a commitment that I would never have. Right. I'd be in front of a Zoom right now if I was on the road. Yeah. With my podcast. Yeah. Well, you have something I don't have. What's that? And then you, followers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joe DeRosa, talking to you is such a pleasure. I, I feel like I'm going to get such a good night's sleep tonight. This episode is sponsored by Helix. Go to helixsleep.com slash Tyso with Helix. Better sleep starts now. It's a very good mattress. This episode of Take Your Shoes Off is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com 
slash Tyso to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso. This episode is sponsored in part by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code SHOESOFF, S-H-O-E-S-O-F-F. New customers can bet $5 on Super Bowl 57 and get 200 in bonus bets Instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code shoes off. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void in Ohio. See show notes for details. Hey, we're about to get back to the episode. I understand you've seen some ads. You're going to see a few more later. This is how we pay the bills. That's how we keep the lights on. But I just want to say I'm doing my own stand up show at the Irvine Improv in California, March 16th. If you want to come on down, ticket link is in the description. Cheers. My podcast needs all the gimmicks. My podcast needs a nice mic arms. Your podcast does very well. What are you talking about? Yeah, I was just being humble. Oh, okay, got it. All right. Let me see that book. Let me show you. Let me show you. Um, it's gonna. I'm gonna have to throw it. Of course. Because I don't want to get out of the mic position. Um, you're such a winner. When someone tells you get a life, you say I already have one. Wow. See, what that's actually like a is, positive. Insult. Yeah, that's what I do because it says okay. you're such a loser when someone says get a life. You ask where. OK, Oof. got it. I think it would be fun to keep this in your literally in your back pocket. Right. So if you end up getting in a scuffle with somebody like I, call me out, say, say, bully me. Hey, the four eyes. How would I how would I how about I need make you need a, a thicker set of glasses? Because I'm going to punch your eyes till they're damaged more. Is that the best you've got? <laughs> no joke. <That's> <laughs> Wait, I don't really? Push it. It's just as if you, that's the best you got. Stop I don't know if you it. can push that's it. That's terrible. Up. Yeah. They're just, they're like, the publishers are never going to read this. Let's just fill out the, bulk it up. Easy, you ignorant fuck. Wow. I'll come over there and pull down your pants and stick my cock so deep inside your asshole. Your mom's going to say, could I suck that guy's cock out of your mouth? That's because not, it's going from your ass out of your mouth. That's not what it says. <laughs> you show me what it actually says. Is that? It says, can you, can you do better? You can't do better than that. <laughs> that's what it actually says. You're like, I was interpreting. Well, you know, you make it your own. That's yeah. something we've learned as comedians. Um. I actually would read this book every single time I sat on the toilet if I had it in my bag. It is a toilet-looking book, isn't it's, it? It's the hardcover, but it's small. Yeah, and it would make me laugh. I keep uh, magazines in the bathroom myself. What's that? I'm just looking because... Oh, it, that's right. You told me you were going to do that, and I forgot. Yeah, but also, Alrighty. this is... Uh, I have yet to... Uh, I've done uh, a, f a few podcasts in here so far, but I've yet to uh, go through and edit any of them, and I don't know what it all looks like, and I'm... I feel like the ISO might be a little high here, but we'll do some color correction. The audience doesn't need to hear about this. No, it's no, no. That'd be great if that was the whole podcast, which is the technical. Talk. I've, I've thought about that because sometimes <laughs> I'm like setting up more and, and like moving the lights and stuff. And I thought it, I, I think I said it on one of these podcasts here and it, that uh, it would be such a mild episode of punked. If just you invite someone over for a podcast in just 90 minutes, you just keep. My friend, Brian McCarthy, who's very Brian funny. McCarthy. He's not a stand up, but he's very funny. Uh, he, uh, I don't mean to say that like you have to be a stand up to be very funny. I just mean because we're stand ups. It sounded that way. Sorry. Uh, anyway, he did a, I don't know if he still does it or not, but he had a podcast called The Mansplaining Podcast, and every episode was him explaining what a podcast was oh. for like 45 minutes. And he really committed to the bit, and it was really funny. Why do you think he stopped? He, he covered all, all the, the. He the might notes. still be doing it. I'm not sure. I know he did a couple, and I was I I assumed like, well, he's only going to do a few of these, yeah. <laughs> but he might still be doing it. I don't know. I should ask him. I know he still does a podcast. I just don't. We know could get him on the phone. You won't be able to hear. That's right. I okay. talk to him constantly. I don't need to. I uh, I've known you for a long time, but we don't really know each other. Well, we met uh, judging roast battle at the comedy store. I forgot about that. I remember go going to do your show. Or a show with you somewhere. That was the second time I met you. Right. It was Blake Wexler's show. Shout out to Blake. Shout outs to Blake. Very also very funny. And is a stand up. But we we met at the we were judging roast battle. At the comedy store. Up in the belly room. Are you past at the comedy store? <laughs> Here's the funny story. I was, and then Tommy, the guy Tommy that used to run it, mm. forgot that he passed me. And then now I'm not past. <laughs> you want me to get you want me to get you one of these? 
Yeah, I'd like I'd like my name on. Oh, not pa- <laughs> I thought you were past there. No, this is my merch, dude. Oh, that's great. Thank you. I, yeah, I'd like to be on that damn wall. More I mean, than getting one of these? I'd take both. Why can't I do both? Well, go to rickglassman.com. Check out the store. Don't forget to use promo code boobs for 10% off. Very good. But so we were judging roast battle. Yeah, and you, 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 I can't remember if you took a little dig at me and or I took a little dig at you first. But, you know, that's what you do. It's roast battle. Everybody's messing with everybody. It's pre-COVID, dude. Yeah, but I said, I made a joke about you looking like Harold Ramis. And then your retort was, <laughs> I played Harold <laughs> Ramis. Yeah, I got that from the book, to be honest. In a you. movie. It was. In- <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I played, played Harold Ramis. Yeah, side asterisk, by side bottom of the page. This is for only certain people <laughs> yeah. can say that. But um, no, and I was like, you in what? And you were like in the in the National Lampoon movie. Yeah, a futile and like, stupid gesture. I was like, oh my God, that's wild. So, but here's the funny and your part. your shirt looks like I Ain't Afraid of No Ghosts, but it's actually- It does a little bit, doesn't it? religion, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then the funny part was, you. okay, so my connection to that movie- is a very thin one. Which movie? The, the Futile, Netflix Stupid, movie? The Stupid, Stupid, Stupid Gesture? Yeah. Um, David Wayne directed that movie. It was produced by the production company that produced... Abdominable. Abominable. Yeah. Shout out uh, to John Stern. Yeah, John Stern. What's up, buddy? They, so they produced Wet Hot American Summer. That's right. where I met David Wayne and John Stern. What did Stern. you do on Wet Hot? Were you a writer? I wrote on the first season. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. And then John Stern's company produced my stand-up special. But they produced it because we asked when we the day that I met with him, John, to ask John if he wanted to produce it and talk about it. I had to meet him on the set of that movie. So all I knew about that movie was John Stern, Abominable, David Wayne, David Wayne, um, um, what's his name from um, Will, Will, uh, Will Sasso, not Will Sasso, the other. I'm Will. sorry, Will Forte, Will Forte, and Maybe. then like. Maybe that will's more your forte. <laughs> and then like every actor who's affiliated with Abominable, which is very, you know, they do a lot of, it's like adult swim type stuff. You know what I mean? Sure. Or wet hot type stuff. So anyway, I met you. You said I was in that movie. I immediately assumed that you were full on like, like left side of the tracks, alt comic, blah, 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 blah. And then when I saw your stand-up, which was the second time I met you, you were way edgier than I. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so surprised. Because I was afraid I was going to offend you. When you because saw my I was in that movie? Because my my immediate associate... I remember when John Stern said he wanted to produce the company to, to, to produce my special. I remember I was surprised because I was like... Jeez, John, I, I always thought you, would, you you thought I was like some like New York scumbag or something. You know what I mean? Like I like when you're a guy from the clubs that only does like the, you know, I came up in the club comedy right. scene. Although to, Tommy may have forgotten, but yes. You know, yeah. <clears throat> you you feel, I, maybe not everybody, but I always felt like a certain like insecurity when it came to the like Brooklyn-y side of comedy. I always felt like like I was like, like like looked down upon like i wasn't like you know i was all like dicks and whatever jokes and whatever so 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 is 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 wet hot american summer david wayne brooklyn comedy gulp 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 because david much like me is from cleveland i would say it's 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 very wet hot is very like i was i was honored to be a part of it because it was very like one of my favorite movies by the way the movie i love the show too but like that turned me on to the series but it's it's just certainly like cool kids comedy you know what i mean like you know an interesting way of looking at i bet you a lot of people would say it's all the it was the it's the outcasts that's that's the it's funny and this is the first time i ever met kurt braunholer and Kristen shaw they were still doing like the comedy team thing together okay I met them at a club called Comics in New York that's no longer there. Uh-huh. And Comics was the shiniest of all the New York clubs. Like it it looked like a nightclub. Right. And I met them backstage at a show there and I said, "How do I get on to the shows that you guys do?" Because those shows are like the sort of like cool kids shows or whatever and they were like, "What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. We're trying to get into here. You get paid to do comedy." Right. 
So I was like, oh, everybody always thinks the other thing is like the cool version. Yeah, I believe the saying is the grass is uh, the grass is nice. Yeah, We're playing it. Yeah, it's nice grass. <laughs> you look over the fence and say nice grass. That's yeah. the saying. Yeah, but yeah. careful, not anymore. <clears throat> no, not anymore. Not yeah, with you not. You can't talk about somebody else's grass climate. No, no. So anyway, I I but I still carry a little bit of that, and I thought when I met you. <clears throat> And when we were on that stand-up show together, I was like, oh, this is that guy that's like in that cool kids movie. He's going to think I'm some kind of like dirt pig up here on stage with my comedy. And then and then you were like very edgy. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And that was it. And then I asked you if you wanted to get drunk and you said, I don't really drink. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> that's funny. It's, uh, you go, you don't think this guy's okay. You want to get drunk? I'm like, oh, no, you fucking pig vomit i don't yeah, think so no dirt, dirt pig. Yeah. yeah you said i don't remember what you said but when you said it did make me think of um uh and, and private parts do you remember uh paul pig, giamatti pig vomit yeah. yeah i love pig vomit yeah and people say i look like paul giamatti w and b c yeah he's that is one of the greatest small meaning just size wise roles ever in a movie Paul Giamatti in Private Parts? It's, um, I, P-G-I-P-P? I, how many times have you seen... Like, that's one of those classics, like, th this guy just stole the show. Who the fuck is this guy? He came in in the third act. And, like, it was, but he was an established actor at that point. No. I don't remember... He was, like, one of those guys you're like, oh, I remember he was in, like, The Negotiator as one of the hostages. I love The Negotiator. Rewatched it, <laughs> less, uh, maybe, I don't know, this past summer. I saw it once in the theater and I enjoyed it. Oh, love. I don't really remember. He's in it, remember? Yeah. He's like the, the Hawaiian shirt gambler guy. Yeah, he's, he's sitting in the chair. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, uh, This was pre-John Adams then. Or way pre-John Adams. The movie that made Paul Giamatti was American Splendor. Don't think I saw it. American Splendor is amazing. Uh, you should see it. That's but, the one where, because uh, the sugar problem in America, so instead of using sugar, they, they use packet, those little pink packets. That's Splenda, one. yeah. Sorry, I said Splenda. It's, it's American Splenda, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the And the movie, the Woody Allen movie, Screen really Low Down, is I'm actually sorry, about the sugar. But correct me if I'm wrong. That movie uh, was just released in the States, um, and then they ended up releasing it in England, correct? And the reviews were, correct me if I'm wrong, American Splenda, Splendid. We'll be right back. Yes. And we're back. <laughs> You're right. You got it. Um, fucking Jew fuck. <laughs> you know, just like, Jesus Christ, put the book down. <laughs> um, but, but pick, like, think about, like, he steals the show in that movie. And I just remember being like, who is this guy? Except being like, that's the guy from The Negotiator. <laughs> like, I did remember that. One of my favorite movies that, and, and if you look at the list of the movies that most people haven't heard of, let alone seen, is a Paul Giamatti film called Win Win. You ever see it? Yes. What do you think? It's a nice movie. Great movie. Yeah. I like any movie. I'm a sucker for, and I mean, they've made it a million times. There's a Woody Harrelson one about to come out. But I'm always a sucker oh, yeah, for the guy it. has to coach the team and the team's not doing well. Yeah, and, it's, it's with a, a bunch of neurodiverse players, the Woody Harrelson one. Is that the dishwasher? Nope. That is time for Read My Horoscopes. <laughs> Joe DeRosa, birthday, April 15th, no. 1963. Wrong. Oh. No. 59. 1959? Yes. Okay. April 16th. It says here, oh, I just sent it to the back of your book. Go ahead. Read it out loud, please. The very back. Your mama. That's right. Yeah. All right. That was right. horoscopes. Yeah. It's it's written yo mama yeah. on the back uh -huh. because the book is racist. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I actually think what's racist is you thinking saying yo is racist. I just was I just thought it was a funny concept that the inanimate object would be racist. But what's racist about saying yo? Is there a certain type of person that says the word yo? Uh I'm because I I think it's I think it's prejudiced against the the music group Yo Yo Ma. Is that a group? Yes. Isn't he just a cellist? Oh, uh, this is just a cellist. Pardon me. You know what? I'm trying to remove saying just in front of things subconsciously because it does minimize it. Yeah, it does. But just I meant not a group of people. It's just one. Just one. Yeah. Well, you don't know how he identifies. I think he identifies as just one. You don't know that. Let's get him on the phone. Let's get him on the you phone. You won't be able to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. I don't want to I talk actually to call Yo-Yo Ma and you think it's a bit. <laughs> You're like, well, he is alt. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, I always think Yo-Yo Ma's a group because there was a female vocal heavy group called Zap Mama. Loved Zap Mama. That They're I, older stuff. The girl I went out on, I, 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 a girl I went out on one date with who I was in love with, who then shot me down after the first date. She loved Zap Mama and I bought the damn CD because mm. I wanted to be cool. See, I got this inferiority thing. I, I want to get everybody into it, but, and even though this should not be a priority, I can't help but think it's a bit washed. I'm checking that, changing that ISO. Give me one sec. Let me you, check you, check you. All right, now it's going to be tough for you in the audience to recognize the YouTube one, at least the difference, because we did color correct. But I'm curious, from right before I stood up, in fact, we'll put a side by side of what it looked like when we were talking before to this. Could you see a difference? And do you like this more? In the comments, if you like it more, say I like it more. Joe DeRosa has a big wiener. Okay. If you can't tell the difference, right? I can't tell the difference. Joe DeRosa has a medium sized wiener. Okay. And if you like the other one more, say Joe DeRosa has a tiny penis. I like the other one more. So your inferiority complex. <laughs> People are actually going to write that. Yeah. And then it'll become some bit. Come some bit. Isn't that Japanese the chicken some, dish? Yeah, yeah. That's one of the insults in the book. I told you it's racist. <laughs> sure. You did tell me. So what's up with this girl that you loved after one date? Did you love her before? Like, did you have a crush and you got to go out with her? No. When I was, uh, when I was, I guess pre, I don't know. I was probably in my early 20s. I, I think I fell in love with every single woman I went on a date with. Uh, you know, that's interesting because you feel inferior. So when somebody sees you positively, you want to hold on to that. Is that fair? That pro yeah, there, there's definitely that. I've definitely suffered from in, in my uh, in my life uh, <laughs> having a... <laughs> what is that, by the way? Have you seen those before? I don't know. I'm going to do the thing. The... <laughs> No, I definitely had the thing, um, I guess it, you call it imposter syndrome, where if something's going well, you're like, this. Uh, the ball, the, the other shoe will drop at any moment here. This will be ruined at any moment because of me doing or saying something stupid. I used to have it on stage uh, where I'd be like doing well when I was a, a younger comic. I'd be doing well and I'd think to myself, I can only mess this up. I will mess this during up. During the actual set or like and you're I on a run it, of good shows? No, during the actual set. Right. And I would want the set to end because I was like, I'm doing well. I'm going to screw it up. Like in Seinfeld when he goes, I'm out. Yeah. Like leave on the, leave on a good Yeah, moment. but it was like, you know, it was, a, it was in, a, in, a, in a sort of crippling way. Where does this come from? Uh, I would assume abandonment issues from being adopted. Oh, you were adopted? Yeah. Um, both mother and father? Yes. Yeah. How long were you in the system? I was, I was, I was, I was abandoned by both. Wow. And then, uh, when readopted by one. Interesting. Of them. The word abandoned makes you think of everything as that. Everything. Even Yo-Yo Ma you thought was abandoned. Yeah, no, I don't, honestly, I don't look at, I, I'm, I'm joking. I don't Real look quick, at, did you hear my pun? Yes. Yo-Yo Ma was, yeah. It was good. It was very good. It, 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 I did well. A ban? Get a, get did? a compliments book here too, so we can retort. With nice things. So you're not supposed to say retort. You're supposed to say neurodiverse. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, How old were you? When I don't see adoption as a, I don't see being put up for adoption as abandonment. I actually see it as a really stupid and futile gesture, to be honest. And we're back. Uh, no, I see it as a really beautiful gesture for a child that you're unable to raise properly if you, if, or if that's what you assume. Um, There's a clip, that, but you do have abandonment issues because of it. I want to cut to a clip that I just saw uh, on Instagram of uh, of uh, a child's. Um, I've seen a few of these before, but this one really hits you over the holidays. Child um, giving a note to would to the, the to be father, as uh, saying he wants to be adopted, and just how beautiful they are connecting to it. Uh, read it out loud. You have to read it out loud. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for always being here for me. Thank you for teaching me how to be a man like that. Thank you for always treating me like your son. You have always been a dad to me. I love you. <laughs> my, my big question is, will you adopt me? <laughs> well, hey. 
Hell yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> That's the best present I've ever got. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, we were supposed to act. Yeah. No, no, no. I learned in acting class it's more interesting for the audience to see somebody struggling to hold back the tears than to be blubbering. You know what? The, the, Which is true. There's, the, there's, that's not exactly right. And as a award winning dramatic actor. Would uh, you win for? Um, my show, As We See It. Oh, that's right. Congrats on that. Thank you. I did see that that won some awards. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, but uh, it's less about needing to hold back the tears and more about not forcing the tears. As We See It, canceled. Yeah. But- as not enough of us saw it. <laughs> yes. But on ABC, I think it's probably already out now, starting February 8th on Wednesdays, not dead yet. It's reruns? There's another show. Oh, the show's... I thought you were saying, as we see it, it's not dead yet. No. There's a new show called... Oh, it's not, different. Not dead yet. Yeah. Oh, really? That's yeah. great. Um, That's fantastic. Congrats. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Cry. Cry, cry, cry. Right. Uh, tell me one of your jokes. <laughs> so how old how old were you when your parents left you? Have you ever met them? Why mm -hmm. did they decide to get rid of you? And how long were you in the system? Sing about it. I was never in the system. That's so funny to refer to as the system. I, I guess it is though. Yeah. I was never, I was adopted at nine days. I don't, I never knew any other thing. My parents, my adoptive parents told me from day one. Like day I- nine. I, you day nine. <laughs> I don't remember them ever telling me. Like so I nine just months in the knew. womb, and then nine months, nine days in the system. In the system, hard nine days, yeah. hard nine days. HND, yeah, good band, solitary confinement. So when yeah. your when your mom was pregnant with you, yeah, uh, did she know that she was giving it up, and so she probably already had it because nine days. They like don't maybe, let you talk. You know, you can't. But your mom never told never told you. How they found you? I mean, did they work with? Well, it was through an agency, but the agency right. doesn't give you any information about your parents. They give us a little information, right? But they can't give you, you know. I understand. Pro they probably told us more than they should have. They gave us some ethnicity information. And were they white? Uh, Egyptian, and uh, and as far as I know, Italian. Yeah. Well, obviously, you know. But as far but, as we all know. But then I did, uh, tw you know, the DNA things, and they all were a hundred percent Arab. There was like no basically no Italian blood. So um, I recently did one and it turns out I'm 100% that bitch. Oh, nice. I got boss bitch on mine. Sorry, that's better. So your mom uh, and your dad, now you were adopted by a married couple. Are your parents together still? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they told you at what age you think? I literally don't remember them telling me. I because just you told, always knew. So they, they clearly just, it was just folded in from the beginning. Right. You know, and have you but they didn't tell me that I was Egyptian until I was twelve. That's true. How'd they sit you down and tell you? <laughs> my we were my parents are Catholic, sure, and they're fairly religious. My dad's. Do you uh, think it's a good religion? Uh, I don't practice it, but it seems to have done well for them. It seems to do well for certain people. So if it works for you, God bless. As long as you're not hurting anybody else mm -hmm. or taking it too seriously. I like this new Pope who's got a much open, much more open mind about, you know, gay marriage and stuff like that. I think yeah. that's great. I think that's what the church needs. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> and my parents aren't preachy. It's just kind of their own thing. But. Um, so the shirt has nothing to do with your parents' religion. Uh, well, it's their one, Bad Religion is one of my favorite bands. Coincidence? That, well, it's not a coincidence. It's 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 Bad Religion was the first band. George Carlin and Bad Religion played a big role in my formative years because they were the first artists I'd ever heard speak out against question religion. Right, and uh, and I didn't. It's not like I was like, yeah, screw you, God. I just was like, oh, there's like you can challenge this and question it and whatever. Yeah. And I like you know, and Bad Religion has even said this isn't like an anti. Jesus symbol or something. It's just an anti authoritarian authoritarian right. symbol. Like don't tell me what to think. Like rage against the machine. Yeah. Yeah. But I like bad religion better. I just did I Ari's, like Rage Against the Machine. Ari's podcast and he had brought up Rage Against the Machine as an anti government 
doesn't matter. We could swipe to it. There are songs that I could probably even sing along to that I never really listened to. I know the words to. I have no idea what the song is about. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you're like, you say, and then sometimes you hear it. You're like, oh, what? This is what happened after, you know, whenever we got like uh, activated um, during Trump and a little bit during Obama, everyone got mad at everybody for everything. And they heard Rage Against the Machine for the first time again. Mm. But they actually were listening like, wait, this is anti- this is anti-government? Right. And be like, yeah. And then Triple had a joke like, did you think it was rage on behalf of the machine? <laughs> We're back. Wow, that was good stuff. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so that was just on the mind. <clears throat> well, so, so yeah, so I don't think it's a coincidence. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, too, um, uh, oh, so you asked me how my mom told how they told me I was Egyptian. We, we, had, we, were in our, we, had a, we had a blessed mother statue next to the swimming pool. And I was in the pool with my mom and she swam me over to the Blessed Mother statue and said, I'm telling you this in front of the statue so you know that I'm not lying because I would never lie in front of the Blessed Mother. And she told me and I didn't believe her. And she kept saying, "I'm, I'm this is why I'm telling you here. And uh, I, I don't know exactly why she waited so long to tell me, but I think a lot of it had to do with being overly protective. We, you know, we lived in a very... Um, Similarly minded, very white suburban neighborhood. You know, it was the, it was the eighties. Uh, you know, people were less open minded, and so I you think, were born. I think she was scared that that I'd get like persecuted in some way for being different. I have your mom on the phone. Give me one sec. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Rick Glassman, the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. I have your son. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. But son, you get it. Mm -hmm. And we were wondering, why is it that you waited until he was 12 to tell him that he was... A... <laughs> no, it's okay. Why was it that you were 12, or he was 12 when you told him you were... when he was Egyptian? Egyptian. Got it. Makes sense. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Yes. All right. I couldn't hear anything. All right. Bye. This uh, is how I take her calls normally, by the way. I don't have the headphones oh, on. Oh, no, you can't hear? I leave the phone across the room. She said that I guess you went to a school dance and um, you were dancing like this. <laughs> Yeah, but that wasn't because of Egyptian stuff. I had a back brace. It was very hard to do any kind of moves. Coincidence? Who knows? I think most people who have back braces, it's a self-imposed back brace. I, I feel like they deep secretly want it. I have a question. After she told you, did you say, thank you, mummy, for telling me? I said, yes, I said, mummy. <laughs> uh, I... Uh, now I said, "Mom, I'm not in denial here." <laughs> right? No. But, yeah. Did she? Did she decide to adopt? It took me that long to think of an Egyptian <laughs> did she, joke. Did she decide to adopt because she was infertile and she could tell because she didn't. Um, she couldn't have a period. A, a what? Oh, excuse me, a pyramid. God, you almost. God damn it! It was almost. It was almost perfect. What? Well, I, I know. No, but you screwed it up. Did I? Yeah, because you said period, and then if you I didn't say if I didn't say, but if I if, said no, if you, you didn't just, have a pyramid, if you had hit pyramid first, I was like that would have been excellent. Give me another take. All right. Ooh. Jeez, it feels one minute earlier. Uh, <laughs> your mom can't have a pyramid. Period. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is sponsored in part by Helix Sleep. Now, if you're a big Take Your Shoes Off fan, first, thank you so much, and second, you know that Daddy loves his Helix Sleep, and of course, I'm talking about my daddy as well as me. Gold, gold. We have so many Helix mattresses in, in our homes that, you know, that uh, I'm glad that we have them. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. You go, you take the little quiz. Do you sleep on your side? Do you sleep on your back? Do you like it firm? Do you like it soft? Do you like it hot? Do you like it cold? And if you don't love it, you have 100 days risk-free to return it. Now, when I say return it, I don't mean drive it somewhere. I mean just put it outside. They're going to come and pick it up for you for free. You heard me right. That personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. This mattress is American made and comes with a 10 to 15 year warranty. And don't forget about that 100 night risk-free 
trial. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress picked by both GQ and Wired Magazine. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash Tyso. That's H-E-L-I-X-S-L-E-E-P.com slash T-Y-S-O with Helix. Better sleep starts now. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. And if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a good way to go. Here's the deal. It helps you find a clinical licensed therapist, usually within 48 hours, and you get to do it from the comfort of your own home or anywhere you are. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Now listen, therapy I don't believe is just for people who are really going through it. Therapy is also maintenance. It's also just for better self-awareness and for better understanding of self. It's having somebody to talk to and somebody who understands how to recognize some patterns in the things you're saying to maybe pinpoint some reasons you're feeling the way you're feeling when you might not be that conscious of it. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash Tyso today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso. This episode is sponsored by DraftKings. Now, if you like betting on sports, I got good news and I got bad news. The good news is new customers could bet just $5 and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. The bad news, <laughs> but you're going to bet on the bears and... <laughs> Man, that's that the spread on that's got to be fucking wide because, you know, and if I could bet on something, I'll bet on my grandma swearing about her Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Get him! What the fuck you letting him? Oh, Jesus Christ. You Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code shoes off. New customers can bet $5 on Super Bowl 57 and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code shoes off. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void in Ohio. See show notes for details. Um. Yeah. They. They. They couldn't. <laughs> they, I don't think this is T TMI on their part. They couldn't have kids. That, that was why right. they adopted. Yeah, I understand. So, so you know, sadly, but uh, but yeah, it was. It worked out for me, uh, yeah. and it worked out for them. Quite frankly, you know, you think their biological kid would be running around doing t TV and podcasts? Maybe they'd have, they would have. They would have birthed some loser accountant, or maybe somebody that goes to like some type of like. Uh, prestigious school and you know what's it called um when when they're on the boats they did in the social network oh the fair rowing team yeah right yeah fair row you mean a nerd i would have beat that kid up what would he have said back to you to the this is what i'd say to the rower fair rower you'd steal the straw from your mother's kennel <laughs> that's good well, guess what the one before it is? The one before it is terrible. Okay. You'd make a great politician. Like, it's, that's not Ooh, really. No, that's a good dig. It's, 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 I you know get what it, I know about like, you. I feel like you'd make a good politician. That's kind of a more subtle, you have a good face for radio. Yeah, it's not as good, you know? Well, this is the reason the radio one hits so hard. This one I like a lot. Ready? Hold Calling on. you a dirty liar would be an insult to dirty liars. <laughs> <laughs> you could funny. use that formula with anything. Calling you a insult would be an insult to the, you know, calling you a uh, fucking piece of shit garbage junkie. That was one of my favorite Dennis Miller jokes where he goes, I'd call him a scumbag, but it would be an insult to bags filled with scum. Dennis Miller's show, I I watched some of it a few years ago. The but, HBO one? Yeah. His, uh, what I was it called? Show. The live one. The the HBO one was incredible. But the, the jokes were so above everyone's head. That I only knew they were funny because of the cadence. He said on the on the um, Fly on the Wall podcast, the David Spade Dana Carter uh -huh. one. He said that he he has jokes where he goes, "It's just a rhythm joke. I don't like They're, the reference doesn't even make sense." He goes, "Yeah." He said that. Uh, they, they were talking about he was talking, those one he's talking about friends. Yeah, a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, uh, twenty something year olds with medium jobs living in a place that big in New York City. Yeah, that kind of that kind of money they'd be better off living in a closet as flaky as Billy Bartlett's shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, huh? <laughs> it works though i'm like laughing sure. and i don't know if you don't understand the reference uh, -huh. uh that show that eight that 90s late 90s early aughts talk show that he did mm -hmm. on hbo to me was the most it was my it's arguably my favorite talk show that's ever existed and like it is i thought it was the most perfect socio-political balance i'd ever seen on television where it was just hitting both sides so evenly 
Do you like Real Time with Bill Maher? I, do, I, I'm not a huge fan of the show itself because I'm not a big fan of like panel talk around, you know, whatever. I've done it, but I don't like to watch it. But I, I appreciate the show. It's just not really something I would watch because it's definitely more like politics than comedy. I felt like Miller's show was, sure. was political comedy. The new rules segment at the end of Bill Maher. Uh, at the end of every episode, there's new rules. Yeah, I know. Uh, that is always really good to me. I I like those too, and people hate those. And then I'm afraid will now call me a Nazi in the comments for hating them or for liking them. For liking them, people like get people like like people on the left get furious with him. And, and like everyone's him. no one's on the left or the right, dude, except for their personalities on Twitter. No one gives a fuck. I also don't understand like only subscribing to things you agree with all the time. Like, or with, like I did, like I did, and it was only a couple people for the most part. Everybody was cool, but I did Gutfeld last night and I got some messages today in, in, on Instagram. What's Gutfeld? It's a, he's a, he does a late night talk show on Fox and it's, but it's like, it's like, you know, it's a, they, it, it's a it's a funny show it, or it like you know it's it's goal is to be funny and uh -huh. loose and whatever but it's political issue but it's on fox so obviously they have some pretty conservative guests on and stuff mm -hmm. but like a couple people wrote to me like why dude why tell me you're not actually doing this show and it's like i don't understand what you want out of life do you want everybody that you listen to or or admire or or a fan of or whatever it is you want to call it to only do things that you also agree with. Like, so you want there to be one unified voice on every platform mm -hmm. everywhere and you just ignore the ones that you don't. It's just such a weird way to live to me. How and did it go? When you were done, did great. you, did you uh, stand up and take an imbow? I bowed. I got some flowers. Uh, I've known great. Embalm. I, 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 did you embalm? Damn. I, yeah. I said embow. <sighs> As in bowing. Oh, I thought. And, and well, bomb. I thought you meant did I just stand up and bow? Yeah, yeah I, I used. I that but one. Did, I did, did you did do well word. or did you embalm? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've known Greg since for 15, 20 years. Like, I, which I, is it? Either it's either it's whatever I want it to be right now, and I'm gonna say both. Okay. Um, but do you know what I mean? Do you do you agree with this or? Yeah. Mm. Um, sorry, am I? I tend to talk like. Sometimes on podcasts, I'm not like silly enough. I like like I like get into like the conversation of it. I don't know if this is that kind of. This 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 is whatever the energies of me and my guest uh, come to, and we bring whatever we are. And as long as we, uh, you could just fucking switch your which legs are crossed at some point, then it's all gonna be good. Wait, no, you told me you didn't like this way. You wanted it the other way. I was joking. Fuck off, dude. I remember when you only had one chin. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, these are good fat jokes. If uh, you weighed five more pounds, you could get group insurance. That's good. That color really compliments your stretch marks. Jesus Christ. That's a low blow. Go ahead. Pull up a sofa. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's funny. Yeah, that's great. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Okay. It's a good book. It's a great book. I should sell it as merch. Just that one. I've thought about doing that, uh, selling stuff as merch, but just like things I, like I need to get rid of my Peloton, for example. Okay. Just throwing stuff on my website that I want to sell. Okay. All right. You okay? Liked it. Yeah, I'm just admiring this apartment. It's a great it's a beautiful apartment. space. I want to know what the rent is in here. Oh, I can't tell you on here. I, I want to know, though. I really want to know real bad. Like it's, 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 it's like irking me. You know what I mean? What would you guess? Because of where we are, and I won't give away the location. Thank you. You mean 2023? $3,000 a month. Hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. How much higher? Bleep this. $19,000. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> you said that like such a mom. Oh, cut, cut, cut it out. No, because I thought you were going to give me a real number. I got excited. Not on this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But, but is it higher than that? Yes. Really? Yeah. It's a it's a two bedroom. I know, but we're two full baths. We're out ceilings. The, you know, we're out. It's I don't want to say where we are. Yeah, but we're you're not know. that out. Yeah. Technically it's out. Right. But it's not that out. 
Sure. You were all the way east right. in the city. You could have gotten here in 20 minutes if there wasn't a traffic jam. Sure. Absolutely. Got it. But more, yeah. We're in Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're in Sleepy Hollow. I want to know more. I still want to get into the uh, the inferiority complex. Uh, Let's get into Ari, it. Ari said something to me. About um, me? What the fuck did he say? That. There you go. Ari said uh, he loves you so much. Um, oh, really? He, yeah. That's nice. And, and you dish it. Uh, you, you dish it. But uh, you get real sensitive when people dish it, give it back. Oh, and you he's have to be, so full of shit. Listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> listen. When do I get sensitive when I would? I don't believe he said that, by the way. Now I don't believe he said it. Let's get him on the don't phone. Don't call him. I don't want to put the headphones on. Hey, um, I haven't checked the text yet, but uh, uh, small world. I'm, I don't know if I'm using that saying right, but the timing. Uh, I wanted to get Sal on this podcast. Okay. And well, uh, you do a podcast with yeah, Sal. Yeah, reach out to him. Uh, no, but I just got texts from him. Oh. So I just think that's funny that okay. while you're here. Well, people often ask me, can you to ask Sal? I thought that you were going to do that. To do it? No, no, no. I don't have that kind of relationship with you. I very, very rarely ask some, somebody to get a guest for me. Oh, this sounds nice. Call Ari. We can do the thing where then I call him, and then if he picks up, it's awkward. Wouldn't be awkward. You guys are New York brothers. Hello? Ari didn't? He's not good at answering the phone, I've noticed. Cut to him trying to answer the phone, but he, yeah, yeah. he can't fumbling over it. Uh, so wait, what did he Did he really say that? Because uh, if he really did, I'd love to talk about it. Yeah, if but I don't know. I, I think that it was in play while also inspired. Like yes. he wouldn't have said it out of nowhere. No, no, no. And I, I don't do see what I'm he's saying. I'm not insulted by you it. You seem very, uh, I'm sorry, by the way. I meant nothing by it. I think you're cool. I think you're cool, man. Relax. I think I can, I think with the way, I, the, how I would correct his statement is I, I do dish it. I can dish it. I am also a sensitive person. Yes. But I don't think that, but I also think I'm good at like taking shit from people. I think uh, you know? you're really great at it. Like as ball, ball breaking, I mean. Ball busting. But actually maybe he's right. Maybe I do get a little, <laughs> like I don't get like, screw you, dude. Like, I, but I might get a little like, oh man. Yeah, he said he said yeah. that like, you guys will do the play, da, 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 but he goes like, but after the fact, um, it, it would benefit to then be like, by the way, you, I was just joking around. And then you'd be like, no, I know, I know, I know. But you get a little sense. Ari will, so I, I, I know why he's saying that. And I have said to Ari, like, are you, mm -hmm. were you mad at me? Ari will joke in a way where it is, you're like, what? You know what I mean? Because you don't get it or because it's too aggressive. He does it in a, he, the joke is that he's being an asshole. Right. And like, it's, so it's not like, Hey, you know, it's it's not like, uh, hey, Joe, it takes you longer to rest than it did to get tired. You know what I mean? Like, it's not. <laughs> Wait, I don't get it. it takes I guess you longer you're to, lazy. You sleep too much. It takes you longer to rest than get tired. I guess because he's resting there. Okay. How about this? Ari won't be like, hey, hey, Joe, you're so old. You fart dust. <laughs> I don't imagine. Imagine you're like. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Daniel Van Kirk used to do this really funny thing where you'd be like, like, you know, just like he'd walk up. He walked up to me once at a festival and there was a bunch of us and he, he said something about like, you guys heading back to the hotel? And I was like, I am to meet your mom, you know, some dumb right. like whatever. And he goes, ha, 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 can I talk to you for a second? Right. <laughs> and it was such a funny bit of like the guy that gets way too serious about like Brent, do you the know most Brent benign Warren? joke. Huh? Do you know Brent Morin? Yeah, I love Brent. Um, he and I do a bit like that a lot where if we're in a group and we some we say something, it's a mild thing, yeah. uh, or even just something that's not even an insult but takes away from somebody a little. It'll be like, that's funny. Can, I, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, yeah, Same yeah. exact thing. Yeah, it's so, it's so funny. Uh -huh. but, um, but Ari will do a bit where the bit is like, yeah, dude, you're off the fucking invite list now because I'm, I've had it with it. Like, you know, like, and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> but, and you don't know he's joking. No, because it doesn't, that doesn't sound like right. a joke. And then I would, I'll respond and be like, you know what, dude, fuck you and fuck your invite list then. You know what I mean? Oh, and then Jesus. I'll be like, dude, I'm just kidding. And I'm like, well, it doesn't, it, that didn't sound like you were kidding. That sounded like you were really mad that I couldn't make it to this thing. And then you said I was off like some. He's fucking gaslighting invite. you into showing some some colors, though. It reminds me of a Fresh Prince episode. Are you, do you have you heard of that show? 
Who? The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It's from the guy that he's a, he's a. It's about a prince that gets too handsy. It's about Prince uh, Andrew. No, no, is Prince Andrew the one that just got banned? Banned from, uh, Buck from Buckingham. I think it's Prince Andrew. Oh, the one that's married to Meghan Meghan Markle. No, 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 no. Prince Andrew just got. I think it's Prince Andrew. Prince Char King Charles just banned Prince So and So because like he got like Me Too accusations and stuff. Oh, but that's not Prince. That's oh right, the older man, that Prince he's Charles. A, no, no, no. He's King Charles now. Um, there's a prince, right? Named Prince, I think Andrew. I think it is. I he know was married, he, the guy that was married to to. Uh, I want to say Fergie, not Fergie. Was it Fergie? Oh, then I don't know. Not what you're the singer about. Fergie, the red hair. Yeah, the older one who's like was lady. like touching touching. Um, yes. Uh, but that was that was pretty quick. The Fresh Prince. It was really good. He gets two hands. Uh, are you familiar with the Fresh Prince of Van Nuys? No. You know, I was I was six lead on the show once. Yeah. Yeah. Cool man. The show called Fresh Prince. Yeah. Who were you on Fresh Prince, man? I play a dude called Skippy. You were Skippy on Fresh Prince. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was a mailman. He was the mailman. But he was just like he delivered mail like three times yeah. a day. What was one of your lines? It's Skippy time. Skippy, if you're fresh. Skippy, if you fresh, it sounds prince. like a catchphrase. Huh? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Skippy, if you fresh, Prince. It's, it's our Prince Fielder. Hey, what was the name of the show that you were on? It was the Fresh Prince of Van Nuys. We did a season and a half. <laughs> uh, so the uh, there's an episode where uh, they record the lottery numbers, like the Super Bowl, the big lottery numbers, <laughs> winnings. Um, and then replace Jeffrey, their butler's lottery ticket with the winning numbers. And when he's right. going to watch, they press. So Jeffrey is in his room what a and he watches joke. and he sees he wins. And when Jeffrey wins the lottery, he just goes off and starts breaking something and fuck you and fuck you. But, you know, a network multicam version of that. And they're so like, we were just joking. Sucker. Yeah, it was more like cocksucker. <laughs> yeah. Eat my yeah. balls. <laughs> you know, eat my ass, you scum. <laughs> right. Um, and then he's like, no. And he's like, oh, well, I'm embarrassed. Now I have to quit. Yeah, that's like, did you ever see the Twilight Zone where the guy has the bunker? He bu he builds a nuclear. Is this where he breaks his glasses? No. He builds a nuclear, you know, what's that called? Fallout a, shelter. A fallout shelter, yeah. In his basement. And they're in like all the neighbors kind of rib him like, you worry too much. Like everything. And then a, they make an announcement that there's an airstrike. And, um, he, you know, takes his family down and all the neighbors try to get in. And he's like, I'm sorry, I warned all of you. Right. You all said I was stupid. There's, I cannot let you in. I do not have room. I warned you all to do this for yourselves. And that's it. And they all start to just insult one another and whatever, whatever, whatever. And then it turns out it was a false alarm. And then at the end, it's just the moral is we will never be able to repair this like now was the problem the person who didn't let them in or was the problem the people who were insulting no people? the people that like what they reduce themselves to when they right. become desperate right to save their own lives it's kind of like the monsters are on uh maple street that's the uh that's the breakfast pixar movie yes it's about maple street is a street syrup street <laughs> right. uh it's more like a river but like <laughs> uh, -huh. uh or just a sticky road i guess yeah, if it was yeah a river. gross a really gross road uh, and the tadpole, those t uh, those frogs are hopping in the lily pads, which are pancakes. It's a yeah. Well, it's about a waffle man. The waffle man, he comes syrup everywhere. Okay, it's it's kind of inappropriate for kids to be. We'll honest. cut to a clip. I actually, I remember that because somebody actually, it's really weird because somebody sent me this a while ago because they thought we were in it because the the people with the waffle man look like us. What what are you paying this editor, by the way? And we're back. <laughs> These edits don't really go in, do they? This is all a gag, right? Speaking of gag, open your mouth. Yeah, I was gonna say, like Goblin is now inserting himself yeah, in Joe's mouth. But do do any of these edits actually go in? It's the sound of him. <laughs> that one you get you gave it away because I was like, there's no way that he's getting these levels of animations done. Okay. Uh well, maybe you are. I don't know. <laughs> I'll never watch. But here's the point. Uh as much Oh, is it Ari? No. But I do have to pee. Is it my mom? It is your I miss her. Your mom does have some nice cans. Let's picture your mom's headphones. Right here. Um, Those are beats. Do you miss your mom? Give your mom a call on the pod while no, I go pee. Never. Do you never. mind if I pee? I don't give a shit. It's your show. 
I just wanted to tell you the last thing, though. Oh, <laughs> I get it. You pissed your pants. Market blue. Um, no, sh- um, Monsters uh, on Maple Street is the is the classic Twilight Zone that's studied in like sociology classes and stuff. Uh, it's part of many college curriculums, but um, it's about where the aliens come and secretly turn off all anything that works with power mm-hmm. at all. It doesn't work suddenly for no reason. I assume they avoided the Amish countries. Yes. Okay. Uh, but like, and yeah, basically that's what they do. They turn a suburban block in middle America into Amish, whatever. And like nobody understands why the electricity's out, why the cars don't work. Nothing works. And they all start to blame one another mm-hmm. and they turn on each other and they descend into like pitchfork toting mobs in within like hours. I miss the old times. Is what yeah, and then it thinking. cuts at the very end to aliens observing it and saying, like, this is how easy it will be to divide and conquer this planet. Like, you just take their, you take the electricity away from them. Right. And they can't survive. They'll, they'll turn on each other and do the job for us. And it's, it's very, very interesting. It's very, yeah. very interesting. What, uh, what, what we are based on the infrastructure that, that the generations before us gave us isn't what we are in, in intuitively without it. Like, like there are, there's law and order, there's agriculture, there's, there's uh plumbing, there's access. Uh, but we're just fucking animals. Well, did you ever see the Carlin thing about like, it would all, all ugh, there's hair on my tongue. All it would take is the power going out for like basically the apocalypse to happen. Uh-huh. It sounds like the Waffle Monsters of Maple Street. Yeah, well, it's a little different because his isn't involving, like on, on that one, it's like anything, like even the cars don't work. Like if the power went out, your right. car would still work for a period of time at least. Until, yeah, when the power goes out for a couple of days. Until you couldn't pump gas anymore or recharge your battery, right? But like, but he talks about how quickly things would deteriorate if just the power grids went down. And he... He, he really breaks it down. It's very interesting because he talks about even like the jail cells, the prisons would open up because all of the prisons, the security and the locks are all operated through electricity. Kind of like in, uh, in uh, which Batman was it with Scarecrow? Was it the first Christian Bale First one, one yeah. Batman yeah. Begins. Yeah. The first one of that. Of the Bale, of the Bale Nolan series. Of the series. Bales, yeah. Yeah. Saw Christopher Nolan Bale, walking. Bale, Scarecrow, hey. Christian, never, never put that together. Bale, hay, scarecrow. But why hay? Because scarecrows are like, I guess you're right. I don't know. You stuff a scarecrow with hay, don't you? Yeah, but why But why say hay? Bales of hay, Christian Bale, scarecrow. Oh, yeah, sure. I never put that together. Also, um, ba- uh, Bale is... You wanna, you're going to want to clip that. <laughs> <laughs> why? What do you mean? <laughs> I guess, maybe. And then just it ends with... <laughs> Me getting syrup come to my mouth and you <laughs> gagging on the cock. Uh, I do have to go pee, though. All right. Um, so since uh, you said I miss my mom, why don't you give her a call and I'll be right back. I'm not going to call her, but... You want... Uh, we, we, could, you know, we could jump cut this cup to when I get back, but if you want to do uh, a promotion for any tour dates or your podcast, sure. your Instagram... Uh, we'll push in now, zoom in, put a little upbeat music. Give us the energy. How you guys doing? My name's Joe DeRosa, and I got something I want to tell you about. All right. Hi guys, hi guys there. My name is Joe DeRosa and I got something I want to tell you about. Rick Glassman told me to do it like this. Anyway, uh, I'm coming to your city live, uh, hopefully your city, because I'm coming to a bunch of cities, not every city. But anyway, I got a bunch of dates coming up all over the place. I'm not sure when this comes out, but I'll be in Austin in January. I'll be in Levittown, Long Island uh, uh, in uh, January as well. Uh, I'm going down to New Orleans, Baton Rouge, that area. Uh, I'm going to South by Southwest. I'm going to the Midwest, uh, Chicago area in March. Uh, All kinds of live dates coming up. And I've got a residency of my new hour uh, called I Never Promised You a Rose Garden at the Crane Theater in New York. We're doing one show a month uh, as a residency. Anyway... All of the ticket information and purchase links and all that stuff is available at JoeDeRosaInfo.com. JoeDeRosaInfo.com. 
Also, my sandwich shop and bar, Joey Rose's, is here in New York City. It's open seven days a week. We open at 11.30 a.m. every morning. Check it out at joeyrosesnyc.com. Come in and say hi. Get drunk. Get a sandwich. It's a good time. And then lastly, I got the Taste Buds podcast with Sal Volcano, available on YouTube every Monday on the No Fresh Network channel. And the We'll See You in Hell podcast. Uh, old episodes are available wherever you want to get them from, and new episodes are available at patreon.com slash WSYIH podcast. All right, so I take it you had something to plug, huh? Jesus Christ, I should have taken a dump with all those Sorry, things. it was a lot. It was a lot. It's all right. We'll uh, put it in fast forward a little. We'll put it in 1.2 speed. Gigawatts? Uh, you can't say that anymore. <laughs> and that's 1.21. I know, but it's, it was close. Yeah. Um, was it gigawatts or jiggle? No, it's gigawatts, right? We see gigawatts. G- gigawatts. It is gigawatts. It sounds like gigawatts, right? Giga is what it would be. Well, gig is no gig is is information, so it would be gig, gig. is an information. Gig is size. Yeah, but I, but you, you don't measure power in gig. It's size though. So that's but it's I'm size is it's data size. It's that's the only size I understand. But what's gigab? I think it's a unit of measure of electricity. I thought it was a racial or slur power. for a ghost. Oh boy, does that make sense? Because they go boo. Oh, it makes sense, Rick. It makes a lot of sense. With this, this whole podcast has racial issues. You know, shoes off pod. You're taking a piss of uh, the Asian the culture Asian community. Yeah, you know, it's funny that you think I'm taking a piss at them because you're judging their culture. I'm not fucking with. I'm not judging fuck. them. I celebrate their culture. I have a kimono on at underneath this. <laughs> I'm getting messages over here, huh? From who? From whom? My Asian friend, whom? <laughs> I could get so, Doctor Whom on the phone, and he will let you know. Who? Because, whom? I'm sorry. Who? <laughs> no, no. His name is Doctor Whom. My doctor is named Seymour Whom. How do you spell that? W H O M. Oh, with the silent M. Okay. No. Who? Hmm. Whom? Are you saying hmm or hmm? Doctor Whom? Knock knock. Whom's there? Who? Your doctor. Doctor Whom. Okay. Okay. All right. So this has been fun, man. Yeah, I want to keep going. How long does it go for? I mean, sometimes they go over two hours. Oh, yeah. We don't have to go that much, but I want to talk to you some more. Okay, that's cool. Do you want to go? No, no, no. We can keep talking. That, like, go, like, keep talking. Yeah, let's keep talking. Um, I want... I not s- not for over two hours. <laughs> Do you really go that long? Some of them, that's yeah. wild. Yeah. Yeah, that's good for you. That's commitment. How long is your podcast? I, we try to keep the episodes at a you know an hour. Right. I I don't want to listen to anything for more than that. You know, personally, I, uh, people don't just listen to them and have to finish it right away. Sure, it's something that they you know like that they piece. I together. get overwhelmed when I see a time limit on you know or time amount of time. Yeah. On something. Did you? What did you just breathe in? It was going to be a burp, and I stifled it. Uh, we still, this through line is an inferiority and we didn't yes. really get past much uh, after the adoption to where, cause you falling in love with a girl on one date, is such a, such a specific character trait that you're aware of. I want to hear about it. Well, it's something I did when I was younger. I don't do it anymore, but, um, you don't do it anymore cause logically you know how to beat it, but is there still an emotional reaction where you're like, Joe, this is what, this is what you do, bud. Let's not get too invested. I couldn't speak to specifically why I don't do it anymore. I think it was just a thing over time. I had to learn about myself, like that it was false. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, look, I grew up in suburban America. Uh, suburban America. And uh, I, you know, I, I grew up with people. I grew up under people and around people. Under people. Like, meaning, like, all the adults and stuff that were, you know. No siblings, right? In charge, right. Yeah, no. And around people. And then my friends eventually grew up to be people that all were married and had kids and lived very traditional lifestyles. So I think in my early 20s, I didn't quite yet understand the the depth of, of how unorthodox the lifestyle I was pursuing was going to be and what it would entail and what it would be. It require. 
Um, and I think like I kept thinking like there was a clock ticking, like, well, I have to meet my person because everybody's met their person. And, you know, I started to realize like, well, you haven't met your person yet because you're not landed where you're going to land. Like you're, you know, subconsciously your head is moving in a lot of different directions. directions. Sphinx, you owe me a Coke. There you go. <laughs> How long did you want to do Sphinx, you owe me a Coke? I, I mean, I had Sphinx if there was a moment that I knew I could finish. I got you. But I it wasn't you. like, I, I was finished. like- I just finished. Yeah? In the front with cum. I like how in your head you're like, I don't think I'm being silly enough. What's an easy way of being silly? Cum. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I don't cum. know. So I would, I would, I would get to, um, you know, I get probably clingy or so. I don't know what the term would be, but I would, you know. Are you a Star Trek fan? I'd, I'd cling on. Uh, and you know, and what I would do is then warp <laughs> my own perspective I was like, we're, of the relationship. Wow, dude. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And High it would five. end up being a false enterprise. <laughs> Woo! You're much better with the Star Trek puns. Yeah, there you than go. With the Egyptian ones. Yeah, but no, you know, I, I don't know if you ever went through that. Like, I don't know if you're a, a, a relationshipy guy or a... Um, well, you, know, you would say a, that, a, you know a bachelor more than the show than I don't know. You I know? played a relationship Egon. <laughs> Put up a picture of Harold Ramis as Egon. Harold Ramis is Egon, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and if I were even better in that movie, I may have been closer to getting an Egot. Uh, wait. An Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony, an Egot. Oh wow. Well, he didn't sing in the movie. No, but you need one of you need to get all of them. Oh, I see. So it would have gotten me up closer to an Who's Oscar. Got all of them. James like, Corden. No, I don't think. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg, I think, has one. Uh, Chenoweth has one. Kristen Christine, Chenoweth. Yeah, Who has an has. egot? Yeah. Kristen Chenoweth came. Oh, was the first one that came up. Uh, performers who are so close to an egot. Oh, that says close. I actually think. Um, I think there's only like three people that have it. Who? Has an EGOT. Um, list of EGOT winners. Richard Rogers, of course. Helen Hayes, Rita Marino. Oh, okay. John Julie God. The only person I knew was Rita Marino. Aubrey Hepburn, Marvin okay. Hamlish. Okay. Speaking, of, I only know of Marvin Hamlish. I mean, I know him now, but I first introduction Marvin ha Marvin Hamlish was in a, um, a David Wayne vehicle role models when they called McLovin's character. Uh, he, has, he looks like a young Marvin Hamlish. I like uh, role models quite a bit. Such a good movie. It's so funny. I really like that movie. It's so funny. Mel Brooks has one. Will be Goldberg. Mel Brooks. Yeah, I mean, he does so many musicals. Why not? Right. What the hell and, did he get an Oscar for? Spaceballs. Dracula dead and loving it. Uh, Best costumes. Oscar was in 1968. What For the producers? Be? It had to be the producers. That one. That wasn't a movie in 1968, was it? I would say... Um, what the hell else did he get an Oscar for? Uh, I mean, no disrespect to Mel Brooks. I'm just... Best original screenplay, the producers. Oh, wow. That uh, one? Best original song, Blazing Saddles. Oh, wow. Young okay. Frankenstein was best adopted screenplay. Um, okay. Scott Rudin, Andrew Lloyd Webber, John Legend. I think I knew that. John Legend and Jennifer Hudson. John Legend has, what does he have an Oscar you for? You could win Oscars, I think, for Song. songs in a movie, right? Let's see. John Legend. I feel like it doesn't count as much if it's like you have it because like you right. did like a Disney movie and you won best song for the one movie across like three of those. You know what I mean? You want it for uh, Glory. I knew that. His best original song. But do you know what I'm saying? I like know if you do a movie and that movie wins you three of those awards at once and then you're most of the way to the EGOT, but, I but feel like that doesn't so, count but, as much. But like most things that win stuff, win stuff because that mo movie or show or whatever was popular. Gulp, 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 gulp. So no, you still win it. And also one could argue that the reason it no, was so good. No, but I'm so more good. impressed with like a, and I might be wrong, but okay. like I feel like a Christine Chenoweth like she's one of the people on that list where it's like she's probably been nominated many times sure. for many things and she's had a chance of winning many. That to me is more impressive than like, 
then like, and I'm an Eminem fan, but like do you want me, do you Eminem want as an Oscar for Lose Yourself, that's not quite the same thing to me as like Christine Chenoweth's having an award when she's like, no, I'm like kind of in the mix for this almost all the time. But who's a better rapper? Well, Chenoweth, you know? Chenoweth sounds like a rap name almost. Yeah, because it's got it's got like inherent value and more. And Hamlish always makes me hungry because it makes me. It sounds like a sandwich. A hamburger Hamlet. Yeah, or or ha hamburger Hamlish, or Hamlish and cheese sandwich. Mm -hmm. Hamlish would be a good word for a fake ham. It also sounds like it's good to add lish. It's like that delicious. Yeah, yeah. Marvin Hamlish would be a. It, that's a great deli, like where they name the sandwiches after just, people. Yeah, that. that should be a sandwich. Yeah. You, you, let me get the Marvin Hamlish. No capers. Oof. No. Yeah, capers would be bad on ham. I learned about your sandwich shop from... My I, plug? Uh, no, from... from uh, were you on Are You Garbage? Or somebody was talking about your sandwich shop on Are You Garbage? Did you do I've, Are You Garbage yes. earlier this year? I think I've been on twice now. Yeah, because when I went on it um, uh, last summer, and I was watching some, and I saw you were on it. So I think that's why I watched it. Okay. Because I remember you talking about it. Um, and you just have a, a legit sandwich shop. This is one of your businesses, yeah? Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. What does that mean? Why, why'd you get into that? Well, it just, it was something that came out of uh, lockdown and, and, and COVID. And it was something I always wanted to do. I had the idea when I lived in LA that I always wanted to open like a sort of traditional style East Coast sandwich shop. And originally I wanted to do it in LA because LA could could use a place like that i think you know there's there's a few of them but do you is it a problem that you're losing your italian sandwich credibility by finding out that you're entirely egyptian uh i think that adds a little mystique personally um put a uh, just uh, animate a little uh x-men mystique by his there you go when um oh, i was just gonna make such a bad joke <laughs> never mind uh well we gotta hear it now no 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 uh we'll bleep no. the whole thing no no, uh, uh, it didn't even make sense. The um, I watched you bail on it before getting rid of it. You went. Eh, eh. It was. It upset me how bad it was, and it threw me off my footing. For I a want second. people to see that. Cut back. Uh, zoom in a little slow motion. See him uh, decide. There you go. Um. Um. But yeah, it's my partner. Uh, Paul Italia, who owns the stand, we were just talking about it during lockdown. And, and I told him the idea and he was like, let's try it as a pop up at the stand comedy club. So we did. And it, it got a really nice response and it kept doing pretty well. And we were like, he, 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 you know, like maybe we could open a brick and mortar and we had a chance to and we did. And, and he was like, we should make it a bar, too. Right. So it's the full experience. Were you able to get a liquor license? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we did, and and now it's a bar. How often do you go in sandwich shop? How often what do you go in? Yeah, I try to go in a couple times a week, make sure everything's good. But, but you know, you're not managing. I, I, most of what I have to do is is remote management work. I mean, it's a pretty small R -M -W? operation. Yeah, yeah. That's you're right. the, are you the talent? Are, do you also have a sandwich shop that you know the terms like this? Uh, my father grew up in the restaurant business. Oh wow! And my brother's in the restaurant business. Shout out. Um, to uh, the Greyhound in Glendale and in Highland Park. Wait, your brother owns the Greyhound? Mm -hmm. I know that place. Yeah, it's great. It's a good place. Great cornbread. Yeah. My dad's old recipe, it's called the Flo and Eddie's Cornbread. Oh, that's My dad had a uh, sports and Eddie, bar and grills growing up. I was a fan of their music. So I never, I remember I interviewed my dad in third or fourth grade for like a interview somebody assignment. And I asked him questions because of the restaurant. And where'd you come up with the name Flo and Eddie's? Like, I just thought, I just thought about it. I don't know. I just ran him. I just pulled Flo and Eddie's. And I just always believed him. And years and years later, I found out that there was a band called Flo and Eddie's. And he goes, yeah, it's from the band. I just thought it sounded good. I'm like, I thought you came up. I, you fucking, it felt like such a big lie to me. I, I have a Zappa tattoo here on my arm. I was got excited that you were going to say you, they were like family friends because they were in Zappa's band. Oh, no. And they also sang So Happy Together was their big hit. So happy together. That's I thought that was a Beatles song. No, that's Flo and Eddie's big hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't want to. Don't want to at all. Wish you would stop, quite frankly. Sure. The uh, No, but uh, 
<laughs> yeah, uh, remote management work. And then I go in and, you know, and that's it. I was there on New Year's. What kind of money are you making? I mean, I can't get into it, but. I'll tell you the rent of this I could place. buy and sell this fucking dump. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me the book. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, well, your knees haven't touched in a decade. Whoa, that is true. I am a bit of a sleaze. Oh, oh, these, oh, they're sub. These ones are counterattacks. It's a sad reality of life that you won't always be the one delivering the insult. Sometimes others will attack you since you don't know when or from where. Oh, this such is an like assault philosophy. Occur. Well, it's basically showing like here, like. This is what you use for counterattacks. What are some of the other categories? I thought you were reading actual retorts, and I was like, "That's very oh no no." Wordy. I'm explaining what what, what this what, what's going to be coming up next. Oh, this is explaining counterattacks, and then it gives you a list of some counterattacks. You don't want to blow a gasket because I'm not a mechanic. Okay, I may be immature, but this is what you do if somebody calls you immature. Okay, call me immature. You're you're immature, dude. I may be immature, but you're old, and I could always grow up. Bill Maher would hate that. He hates ageist jokes. That's also like the counterattacks are like are like teachery. Like they're like they're like I'm not going to play your little game. So they're not like snappy comebacks. Right. I want some snappy comebacks. Oh, do you? Well, that's interesting because I'm only interested in the opinions of people I respect. Yeah, these are like these are like I'm going to reprimand you in front of the group. Oh, you're so, whatever, dude. I will always cherish the initial misconception I had about you. You know what I, you know what I would do to these? Like, all right, throw me the book. So do you do you have one of these memorized? No. Do you want me to look at one? Yeah. You want me to see? All righty. So, it must be a counterattack. Yeah, do a counterattack, and I'll show you as a. I'll insult you as a bully. I don't remember where the counterattacks. And are. then you do the counterattack, and then I'll show you how I would respond. Ready? Ready? Uh, oh, oh, there's a one uh, category first, responding sorry. to idiots. So let me look at this. Okay. Ready? You're so old, you still get dressed up to fly. Oh, really? Well, does your stream of consciousness have any fish in it? No, no, no. Give me one of the... No, no, no. That's snappy. Oh, you like that one? See, no, that one yeah, burned you. No, that's I'm what sure. Ari said. <gasps> no, no, no. That one got you. Do one of the ones that's like, that's like finger wagging that you were just doing. Oh, you know I what? I was you, under the Yo Mama. But yeah. Yo Mama is in the counterattack. I want to show you how a bully would respond to these like, these like, you know, sort of logical like I, finger yeah, well, wagging. I don't, I, I, I don't know where I was. I'm just going to do one and maybe that'll be it. Well, just read it. You, you can tell by reading it. You're better than Ambient and cheaper. No, 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 no. The ones that are like, I only respect the opinions of people I respect. Just say that. Just say that. It would matter, you know, it's a shame I only listen to the opinions of people I respect. Okay. All right, ready? You're so old, you still get dressed up to fly. Well, it's a shame I only listen to the people's opinions of who I respect. It's a shame. <laughs> That's what a bully would do to that kind of retort. And then they would come back and be like, oh, are you? Oh, are you? <laughs> Shut up, nerd. I'll hit you in the face. You cut yourself. Yeah, yeah. you cut yourself and taste your own blood. Yeah, you just smile. Anyway. How much do you make? Are you making more Jesus. from your restaurant than you are podcasting? I will never discuss this on a podcast that isn't a podcast about finance. <laughs> Ian Finance? Get Ian Finance in here. And... uh I keep telling him, and he won't do it, that his podcast should be called Finance on Finance, and he should be giving financial advice. Okay, hold on. Are you calling him? Yep. Just had him on. Just yeah. met him. I didn't know him, really. Yeah, I know you. I, I, knew, I knew he was on. How? Because I'm friends with him. You guys talk all the time? Not all the time. You must have talked in the past few But days. if you call him right now, he's going to think you're calling him about like a bit or something, because he knows that I'm here. As opposed to... The serious thing of being like, this is your finance podcast and we need to know what Joe makes at his restaurant? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to answer. 
Oh, I should call him. Then. We could leave him a voicemail. We could have left Ari a voicemail. What, you're hanging up already? You? No, let's just leave him a... Oh, boy. Why do you want to leave a voicemail? Because it would have been fun, and then he could have called back. Okay, I just... But I wanted to get... Oh, man, you're going to do a double call? Yeah, that way he knows it's important. I'm not positive he could hear you through this. You have to be loud. Hello? Oh, you answered. Ian. <laughs> hey. Hey, uh, Ian. Uh, Ian. Ian. Yes. Ian, Ian here. Um, We're on the show. Could you hear Joe DeRosa right now, Joe, speak? Yeah. Ian, can you hear yes. me? Yes. I was just Hello, telling. Joseph. Hi, Ian. I was just telling Rick that Rick was asking me how much money I make. And I, I said. I asked him if he makes more money from a sandwich shop than he does podcasting. And I said. A bit rude. Yeah. And I said I would never answer that question without. Ian Fidance talking no. about... What he said was he would never answer that question on anything other than a finance podcast. And I said, what about an Eden, Ian Finance episode? And then I said, I keep telling Ian he should have a podcast called Finance on Finance, and he won't do and it. And may I just say, this is not just the first, but multiple of times, DeRosa so has suggested a play on words with my last name one time legitimately suggesting i go on stage in a suit and a calculator <laughs> and go it's time for finance talk and he's like you could have a cash register and i'm it's like a funny idea with me or I like it and hit your head i like it <laughs> it's a funny idea you look like a you look like the mad money guy too like you look like a guy that would be like yelling about finance let's see people. how would you interview joe and how would you ask him if he makes more money from his sandwich shop or podcasting let's hear it welcome back to just... finance with finance our guest is Hi. Joe DeRosa. Hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, welcome to the financial district. And today we have the great <laughs> Joe good. DeRosa on. Joe, you're you're an established, wonderful stand-up. And uh, you're also an incredible maker of sandwiches. Mm -hmm. If I were to get into the business of sandwich making using your model, uh, would it be more financially beneficial to get involved in making sandwiches at my shop or pursuing a career in stand-up? And specifically, how much would I make it each if I were you? Podcasting, not stand-up, podcasting. You, podcasting. you couldn't come anywhere near me in either category. <laughs> Whoa, you know what, Ian? Uh, let me uh, let me take this for you. Oh, oh, really, Joe DeRosa? Well, you're one banana short of a fruit salad. You're also one <laughs> sentence short of a paragraph. You're two sheep wow. short of a sweater. You're a couple of knights short of a crusade. What's two sheep short of a sweater yeah. mean? That and, doesn't and mean also, anything. And also, DeRosa, you're one spine short of a human. Go oh, on. wow. <laughs> all right, all right. Ian, that's ianfinance.com. Ian. Did he hang up on that? <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, so oh that, I did get sensitive. Ari's right. I am sensitive. <laughs> I actually thought he was mad. All right. Well, this was fun. I didn't hear you. I thought you hung up. I, we were talking earlier about how I'm sensitive, and I was like, I, I actually just got, I was saying I wasn't sensitive, and then I just got sensitive. Ari told me that uh, that that Joe, Joe? John. Joe would say, uh, uh, gives it out, but sometimes gets a little uh, little sensitive when he takes it. And sometimes you well, have to you have to say to him like, "No, I'm just messing around, bud." Do you? How much do you well, agree with that statement? I'd be prefer to be called so a top. So you know, we we're all podcasting, having fun, pal, friendship time. I will be making a phone call later in the private hours of the night where I go, "Hey, man, you know I love you, right?" I'm sorry, I was kidding and trying to be funny. So my <laughs> sensitivity comes in if I'm too mean for the sake of a joke there so we're all right. sensitive little babies yeah we can all agree that uh and and i think that comes from a place of truly being thoughtful wonderful people there you go i hey, know except for you except for you glassman you piece of shit well, anyway guys well real quick you. ian real quick i want to make sure that i let you know that i may be fat but you're ugly and i could always diet oh God. and you're wow well, you're I as do. mean as everyone says you are I do hope you put the dye in diet. We'll be right oh, back wow. after this. All right. What a fucking uh, asshole. Bleep that whole last thing you no, said. No, Whatever, bye, dude. no, leave it. Leave right. it. Because you should die. <laughs> um, bleep all his stuff, too. Yeah. That last part. All right. Well, I could see it on your entire aura that you're done. So. I mean, Jesus Christ, uh, you couldn't have given up on me more. 
What do you mean? And the way you took off your headphones. You took off your headphones no, like you I, took off a condom after 20 minutes well, of being erectile. We did a, we did a dis- solid 90 minutes over here. That's we, good. We, we're we at uh, we're at under 90 minutes, not including all the cuts. So with commercials, with the opening, yeah. I'd say we're going to be probably around 85 minutes. I'm fine That's with that. That's great. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, I, I did get a little just now, full disclosure, I'm not quitting on you. I got a little lightheaded and like, I was like, oh shit, I got to get home and eat before sugar. my next thing. Yeah, yeah, I understand. That's all. Great. I drank a lot of coffee. Yeah. I get that way too. I'm, I'm always supposed to eat something before I pod, but if I start a pod before noon, I'm okay and I'll eat after. Yeah. I, I, I got up. I want you to know today, got up early for this, committed, ran errands before this mm. so I could be on time for this. Thank you. Uh, didn't sleep very well. Why not? I sometimes I get like anticipation of I've got to wake up at, a, at an that. early hour. How, and I what can't time sleep. did you wake up? Today eight. Okay. Actually, no. I was supposed to wake up at eight. I woke up at like seven thirty because yeah. I just couldn't rest. But got up, ran all my errands, did everything I needed to do, made sure I got here on time. You know, I texted you when the Uber got there. And you got in the Uber in less than a minute, meaning you would seem like you were already outside. I timed it in a way that I'm not kidding. I was walking up to the Uber, and you knew it was because the Uber. I was like, I was like, okay, if I circle back around to my block after these errands, chances are the Uber will be pulling up as uh-huh. I arrive. And it, I literally circled my corner at ten twenty seven. Were you holding things from your errands? No, the errands were like I had to go drop a check i had to go you know stuff like that i circled the corner and at 10 27 and the uber had just gotten there yeah it was so perfect i texted you uber's here um because i got the message i wanted to text you before opening the uber after screen grab because i want to give you an alert first that you could check your phone i go i'm about to screen grab so you can see the license plate and the driver information and then it went to it's on its way i'm like it seems like you're already in the car you're like in the car yeah, well, there was it wasn't hard to tell. There was only one car with a man sitting in it. There were other cars with women sitting in them. I was like, that can't be an Uber. That. Yeah, they, they wouldn't let women drive these. They things. do, but you have to cancel. Yeah, that's nuts, man. I'll trust the automated ones before I trust that. Really? <laughs> Why? What do you have against women? Everything. <laughs> Joe, thanks for coming by. I would say, do you have anything to plug? But you already did it. But I if you want to remind like people. Yeah, just if you want to see me live, come to the show. I'm, I'm out touring, doing my new hour. It's called I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. JoeDeRosaInfo.com. I'm dictate, take, I take it on the road. Was JoeDeRosa.com taken? Yes, it was. Have you tried uh, We're in the process it? of that now. But uh, uh, I'm also doing it as a residency here in New York at the Crane Theater. Again, JoeDeRosaInfo. That's info. awesome, man. Thank you. Uh, JoeDeRosaInfo.com. For any tickets or show info, joeyrosesnyc.com. If you want to check out the shop and bar, come through when you're in town. And uh, yeah. Let go. me let you know that because uh, I woke up pretty early too, not meaning to. I woke up at eight, mm-hmm. uh, wanted to sleep until nine. I was already up, started working on the podcast, just doing some stuff around here. Feeling not bad low energy, but just very low energy. Just right. like I'm in a good mood. I'm just like tired. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Podcasting is easy, so I wasn't worried about it, but I did feel like I just kind of want to sit down. I'm, I don't need to be, I, I don't want, I just want to sit down. Mm-hmm. And we sit down, we sat down, we had a talk. This was a, this was a very easy one. This was very easy. Felt very it's nice. It's not, it, what's not good for energy on a day like today, it's so overcast outside. It's so gray outside, right? A lot of people thought that a futile and super gesture was overcast with so many celebrities in it, <laughs> but it turned out to be a great movie. The, uh, but also too, um, oh, that's what I was going to say. One of the reasons I crashed so immediately was because I got up because I couldn't sleep and because I was running errands and I wanted to be on time. I drank an Americano with four shots of espresso in it. And then I got here and you topped gave me coffee. some coffee and I topped it off. And I'm like, my body is like, bro. Have what? you eaten today? No. Yeah. My body's like, bro, what are you doing? So anyway, this was fun. Yeah. Thanks for coming And I'll by. tell you what wasn't a stupid and futile gesture. Coming here today. Yeah? To be a part of this. Well, anything you want to plug? I, uh, 
I have a sandwich shop. Yeah? <laughs> How much money do you make? How much bread do you make? I'll see you. Oh, Scoot do, y'all. <laughs>